What's up y'all, it's Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach and today is moving day. I got my roommate's truck and I feel like I own the world in this thing. I can literally see over every little car on the road. It's amazing. All right, we're just pulling up. I'm gonna back up and back into it. Let's do this. So I actually already had help with all the major stuff except for the couch, which I'm trying to sell, hopefully by today. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you guys about God's faithfulness with this move and how everything's working out in just perfect timing. So that's what we're doing today. And you're gonna join me on the rest of this move out process. TV, also for sale. You know anybody who wants it. I just have these, um, these things right over here to put into storage and let's see anything else over here. Nope, pretty cleaned out. Light bulbs. And then I have to do something with that rug. We got some more kitchen stuff over here, right there. And giveaways. So much things. And then in the kitchen over here, we've got more giveaways to box up. All of that to figure out how to move. Yeah, just basically the most difficult things to pack, the fragile things, is what I still have left to move. So here we go. Okay, so I've been here almost three hours and I've done some serious damage in a good way. Yeah! Got meal number two here. It's been three hours I ate when I first got here and then um, I'm gonna be eating one more time. So. And then it's kind of dark in here, sorry. So, officially, 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 it is time to say goodbye to my apartment. I've been in for Four years, it's been amazing. This place itself was, sorry, totally a God thing too. Just the way it showed up right when I needed it and it was ridiculously cheap for the area. If any of y'all know what LA pricing is like for apartments, you know that you might get a good deal if you're paying 1500 for a one bedroom and you're not gonna get parking and you're probably not gonna get a dishwasher. Um, so I found this place. It was a privately owned investor who bought out the property and he basically was renting out the places to people for $12.50. And I have, or I've had two parking spaces, hardwood floors, a dishwasher, boom, and it's huge. It's absolutely huge, I'm gonna show you.
Yes, I'm filming on an iPhone. Why not, right? It works. It's just, I'm amazed that I've been able to have this place for so long. And I have a freaking tree. I love this tree. In the middle of this concrete jungle that we call La La Land. I have a tree that I had right outside. I'm gonna tell you guys about how awesome God is in providing for this move here in just a second after this meal number two. did it. We're all moved out. And by we, I mean me. <laughs> um, all I have to do is come back and clean. That, that's the, the most fun part of moving, right? Am I right? But I just wanted to take some time kind of while I'm driving. And don't worry, it's hands-free, mother. <laughs> but I just wanted to take some time to tell you guys how amazing God is. He provides for every single one of our needs no exceptions right on time right when we need it he's never late he's rarely early <laughs> but he's always on time this move just so happens to be happening four years after i moved to la from seattle and that was kind of the time when i was i mean i've told you this in my story where i've been Technically, I've been a Christian since I was four, but I didn't really understand it and choose it and grasp it for myself as a relationship with God until really 2011, 2012. And I moved down here in 2012. So about four years later, and that's a significant number as far as um, Bible numbers go, four years ago, I moved here in love with Jesus <laughs> and so excited about moving down here but here's the thing I was in love with Jesus for what he was doing for me he had told me how loved I was he had provided money and opportunity for me to move to Los Angeles he'd opened every single door from money to permission to a home right when I moved here for free for a couple months like it was insane every single thing was just provided right when I needed it and I mean it was it was so unreal it was just so obviously a God thing but as soon as I got to LA my world kind of got turned upside down and it was as if I went through this like like spiritual ringer long story short I have been through this crazy refining process, you know, like they refine gold to make it pure in a fire. Yeah, the last four years have essentially been a fire. The end of this four years has come and suddenly I just have like this crazy sense and this is before this move started to pan out. I just have had this crazy sense that God was asking me to leave and my apartment, y'all saw it. It was so comfortable. It was perfect for what I needed. It was more room than I needed. It was my little nest. And sorry when you can't see me that is because the sun is crazy bright right now because it's sundown. But I, I've had this crazy sense that I'm supposed to leave. This chapter is over and a new chapter is starting. Or if you think of it as life seasons, one season of my life is over and I'm moving into a new season. I have also been really resisting the change. I think that I am resisting this move because it means that I don't get to be in my little comfortable nest cocoon anymore. I don't want to over spiritualize it, but it just, it's almost as if God's been kicking me out of my apartment. So I just wanted to share that because I'm sure that there are some of you who are resisting change in your life when really 
the best things happen after the change happens or during the change, but you're not gonna be able to experience that better if you just stay with the good enough. And that is a perfect, perfect segue into me telling you how great our God is because he doesn't want us to stay stagnant or regress. He wants us to improve. He doesn't want us to stay satisfied with good when he has so much better for us. So I just hope that really encourages some of you because I know how hard change is and I know how easy it is to slip into this negative mindset of like, oh my gosh, my life is falling apart or this is so out of my control, but here's the deal. None of us is ever actually in control anyway. God is, and he is good. So if you put those two together, those two truths together, that is the most satisfying, most peaceful, amazing thing on the entire planet and beyond. If the God of the universe who created you wants nothing but good for you, and he is always in control, then you can relax because all of that striving that you're doing that's wearing you out, that's not how life is supposed to be. It's not that you're not supposed to do good work, but there's supposed to be time for real rest factored in. So, <laughs> this whole process is just so amazing and I just, it just keeps, I just, I don't know about you guys, but it keeps pointing me back to how amazing God is. I mean, f look at your own life and, and try to track down the faithfulness of God in your life. I love looking back and seeing how things worked out together for good when I trusted God. And he, you know what? Even when I didn't trust God, this is how good he is. Even when I was not trusting God, he still worked things together for good because he loves me. It's just insane. And like I was saying before, when I first moved down here, I can see such a difference between then and now because then I loved Jesus for what he did for me, for what he could do for me, for how he loved me. And now I am, I just love God. I love him so much for who he is regardless of what he does for me, regardless of the fact that he loves me. And the crazy thing is it doesn't have to be regardless because it's, it's still there and that's not changing. So as much as I want to love him without him loving me, like it, I want to love him selflessly, but I can't do that because he always loved me first. Does that make sense? So no matter how much you love God, no matter how selflessly you think you're loving God, you can't ever love him more than he loves you. So it's just insane. Okay? This is spiritual fitness, y'all, since this is what cause fitness is about. It's about fitness in every aspect of life. So yeah, that's just awesome. And I wanna hear, I wanna hear from y'all some of the crazy awesome things that God has done in your life. Tell me in the comments below at least one thing that God has done in your life the past year that you can be super excited about. Go. <laughs> I love you guys. I hope that this vlog was a little bit entertaining and a little bit inspiring and a little bit encouraging. All wrapped together. Put a little bow on it. Y'all are my favorite. We'll see you next week with Real Talk with Rach. Uh, be sure to check out my Patreon page if you want to be part of the exclusive Cause Fitness fam where I share even more than I do here. Other than that, I will see you on social media. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Sorry about the shaking. There's no way to stabilize in the car right now. Yeah, I will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. This uh, box moving. I did some lunges with the boxes. Done a lot of heavy lifting already. But shoot, y'all. Gotta get those lifts in. Get after it. Cause fitness, baby. <laughs>